Hi, I'm Molly and welcome back to my channel. Welcome here if it's your first time. Today's video is all about the Dyson Airwrap. I am sharing nine different tips that will help you get your best results from the Dyson. The first thing that I wanna talk about is prep. And I will talk about prepping your hair, but prepping the device is equally as important. Inside your box, you should have gotten this C-shaped ring and it has all of these bristles inside that are meant to clean the filter. So going down the cord, and working your way up to the filter. You'll rotate it a few times, one, two, three, four, and you can see there's just a bunch of dust that ends up coming off. You can see it floating through the air. You don't want that filter to be clogging. You wanna keep this in the best possible shape for performance and also longevity. The next thing with prep is to make sure that all of your attachments are free of any hair. The reason you wanna keep these clean is because hair on top of hair creates frizz. And I already have frizzy hair, so if I'm creating more friction, it's just going to add to that and be a frizzy disaster. <laughs> so make sure that you just take a few seconds to pull out any hair. It really is one of those small things that makes a huge difference. The reason it's important to prep your hair is because frizz happens when there's more moisture in the outside air than is in your hair. So I use products to add moisture to my strands and to also block out any outside elements. I think of it sort of like shutting the door to my house when it's raining outside. You're just keeping all of the outside elements blocked out. I like to prep with Living Proof Prime. It has sadly been discontinued, so I just find it on eBay, look for it on Amazon. I will leave links below. Other product that I really like is Color Wow Dream Coat. This is a really amazing product for coating hair so that no moisture can get in. It's heat activated, so it's perfect to use with the Dyson because it really does create sleek styles. My hairstylist for my wedding day, Edson, used it on myself and my mother and it just really helped all of us because I got married on the beach and it could have been not great. <laughs> but my hair looked great all day. My mother-in-law, my mom, everyone's hair just looked amazing. So Color Wow Dream Coat, you can only use it every three to four shampoos. If you start to use it more than that, it will create a buildup on your hair. In between using that, I use Lador Silk Ring Essence. This is a Korean no frizz hair product. It is absolutely amazing. It's affordable. A little goes a long way. It's a total gem. I do one small pump of Living Proof Mousse right here at the crown because I do like to have a little bit of extra volume right here at the crown of my head. If that's not for you, you can skip that step. And then I just put a little bit of oil on the ends from Agave Oil. I am talking probably the bottom inch. I'll put in a drop or two. That way my ends don't get super dried out. The next thing I want to talk about are earplugs. You need these. When you are styling with the Dyson, you're styling right by your ear. These tools are just loud. They're very powerful. This has 1300 watts of power. That's a lot. That's why it dries your hair so fast. Squish these down and then you're going to take it Put it in your ear until it's comfortably in the ear and then you hold the outside edge gently. You're going to feel the foam puff up. Every once in a while I'll go to do a quick bang touch up. I won't put my earplugs in and I will notice such a massive difference. So protect your hearing. The next thing I want to talk about, I love watching these Dyson tutorials myself. I just love watching people style their hair and I notice a lot on Instagram people will just be sort of going haphazardly through the hair like picking at pieces and styling them and Listen, that is between you and your Lord, but I, I, I don't understand because when you're drying your hair that way, there's no way to evenly get each strand. So I just feel like your hair would be so damp at the roots. What I like to do is section my hair into at least four or five different sections on each side. And then I do three sections at the front, my face framing layers, the center of my head and the crown. So I section those off that way I can really get in and make sure that the hair is completely dry from roots to ends evenly. You think that sectioning your hair and taking that extra time would add so much time to styling your hair, but because you're not digging through and just searching randomly for pieces to style, it's very organized and very efficient. If you love getting salon blowouts, you'll notice that whenever they're styling your hair, there's so much tension on the hair. Tension creates smoothness. That's what helps you end up with a really sleek style. Even if you're doing something curly like this, that tension is what helps it stay frizz free. If I'm using the straightening attachment, I will hold the bottom and then take the brush and run the hair down 
kind of moving my hand down so that I get really nice tension on the hair. Again, I'm holding it. You can see how I'm creating tension, bringing it down, moving my hand down versus just see how there's less tension here on the hair. So that will have a totally different outcome. When you are using the curling attachment, what I like to do is wrap up the bottom, roll it up to my scalp horizontal, and then I'll start to bring the wand back out and just really let it sit on the end. So you can see how that creates a really nice smooth style. Oh, that looks so nice. And guess what? I didn't put my earplugs in like I said to. And it hurt my ears a little bit. The next key thing is over direction. When you're curling these pieces, if I just held this and went all the way down while I had the dryer on, it would just flatten this piece against my head compared to having a little bit of bounce. And see how this sits off my face? It accentuates your features. So we're gonna over direct the hair, meaning instead of just pushing the hair down, I'll take the brush and I'll put it under the piece of hair. I obviously don't want the hair to go this direction, but that's what creates volume. And I'll also go on top, but instead of just bringing it down, I'll take the brush and I'll take my hair over. This is called over directing and I can just run the brush down and that's how you get a lot of shape. One more time, instead of just having the hair go down, you can go underneath and then over tilt the brush up and bring the piece of hair over that you're working on. And that's how you get a lot of this really nice volume. This is one of my absolute favorite parts of the Dyson changing the attachments. On the back right here, there's a little lock and it takes literally a second to snap things in and out. I think the Dyson works best if you switch around and play with the attachments while you're styling your hair. I start out with the dryer attachment, dry to 70% section. I do really love straight blowout. So I'll usually grab one of my straightening attachments and get the hair pretty much to about 97% dry. So I'll switch the heat down to low and I'll use this to smooth my hair out. This is a big thing. When you're using these attachments, the air is not necessarily getting all the way down into the roots. So just when I'm about finished, I can usually feel a little bit of moisture sitting at my scalp. So I will take my dryer attachment again, doesn't matter which dryer brush you have, and I'll focus that right in, going right in on the roots only. I won't touch the rest of the hair so that my scalp is dry. If you let the scalp just sit there damp, that's when frizz can take over and you can get those little lumps and bumps that can kind of ruin the look of the style. So make sure that you take another 20 seconds. That's literally all I do. It's just to make sure that the scalp is really dry. If I am having a frizzier hair day, I'll grab this round brush attachment. I won't use it on high heat just because as mentioned, it's metal and I don't want the metal to heat up. Curl the front pieces, take those down, style those. And then I personally prefer to finish the look of every blowout with the curling attachment. So I'll just curl the ends a little bit. Once again, this is my general order. Dryer, smoothing, dryer one more time, scalp only. If my hair's frizzy that day, I'll use the round brush on cool and then I'll finish the ends. So it sounds complicated, but once you get into the swing of it, it just goes so quickly and I love how it looks. Really play around with these attachments and figure out what works for you. But my biggest advice is to make sure that you get that cool shot directly on your scalp right before you finish and then with whatever your attachment you're using last again you're going to want to use that cool shot i'll get into that more in a second the next thing i want to talk about is the sandwich technique and i feel like i kind of showed this already with over direction but what you want to do instead of just sending a piece of hair in one direction you want to make sure that you're hitting it from every angle so if i was drying this piece of hair i would start out by running the brush down and then I would over direct it this way. Maybe get it from the front, back, until I have it exactly how I want it. I'm really hitting that piece of hair from every single side, making sure that it's evenly dry. Think of it again like a sandwich. You're just sandwiching every single section of the hair. My eighth tip is changing the heat settings. When I am using my dryer brush attachment, I will use the highest heat setting. Because I'm holding this far away from my head, I feel like that just helps things dry a little bit faster and it's not gonna cause a lot of heat damage. 
much. When I go into using the styling attachments, that's when I turn the heat down. This is really important to keep it on medium heat while you're styling so that your hair really stays in nice condition. Then once you get to that final step where you are finishing the style, that's when I move things down to cool. And then this is the cool shot button. You're going to take this button and move it all the way to the top and hold it. Trust me that the cool shot just really settles things down so that your styles last longer. I did this two or three days ago and to me still looks pretty fresh. And then the last thing I wanna to talk to you about is setting your hair with setting clips. These are very affordable. I will link these exact ones below. These are heavy duty. These are the best ones I've found. The other thing that you want are Velcro rollers. I will pop a Velcro roller in at the crown of my head and then I'll clip it with one of these silver duckbill clips just to keep everything in place. This helps lock in that volume at the crown so that I don't have to do teasing. I personally prefer things to be away from my face and frame my cheekbone. Hold your fingers almost like a pair of scissors and then grab the piece of hair that you want to frame your face, whether or not you have bangs or you just wanna have your front piece curve a little bit. Move it down until you get to about your cheekbones and then pinch the hair. I like to twist it ever so slightly to the back. Grab your clip and place that down. The reason setting hair makes such a big difference, it's just like with the cool shot. You're directing the hair how you want it to be. Now, I tend to get a little bit frizzy around here, so I'll also put one more clip in here. I let it sit for about 20 or 30 minutes, go do my makeup. It just lets your hair cool down and settle. I hope that all of these tips are helpful to you and make that learning curve a lot shorter. Let me know if you have any more questions. I am here to help. I do appreciate you watching. If you found this video helpful, if you could give it a thumbs up, text it to a friend, and there's always more on the blog at Girl Get Glamorous. Thank you again, and I will see you in the next video.